our story begins with the villain of the piece, my ancestor, Sir Rupert Murgatroyd, first baronet of Rudigore and lord and master of Red Erring. His busy life is crowded with evil deeds. His lighter moments devoted to persecuting witches. Sir Rupert enjoys a good fire. But this time, he has met his match. The victim retaliates and proclaims a fearful curse. From this time forth, each Lord of Radigore must commit a daily crime. A crime a day forever. If for any reason he fails to do so, in torture he shall die. That was hundreds of years ago. And ever since, the curse has been faithfully handed down with the title. Sir Rupert's unlucky descendants came to be known as the Bad Baronets of Rudigore, as indeed they are, even to this very day. I did my best to avoid this fate, as you will shortly see. professional bridesmaids and it is at least six months since our services were acquired it's very disappointing dame hannah every young man in the village is in love with her not help to make some gallant youth happy for life. For example, young Robin, he combines the manners of a Marquis with the morals of a Methodist. Good day, Master Robin. Good day, Mistress Rose. You were about to say... I know a youth who loves a little maid. Hey, but his face is a sight for to see. Silent is he for he's modest and afraid. Hey, but he's timid as a youth can be. I know a maid who loves a gallant youth. Hey, but she sickens as the days go by. She cannot tell him all the sad, sad truths. Hey, but I think that little maid will die. Poor little man. Poor little maid. Poor little man. Poor little maid. Oh, tell me, pray, and tell me too. What in the world should the maid ever do? If I were the youth, I should offer her my name. Hey, but her face is a sight for 
I were the maid, I should fan his honest flame. Hey, but he's bashful as a youth can be. If I were the youth, I should speak to her today. Hey, but she's sick and let the days go by. If I were the maid, I should meet the lad halfway. <laughs> I really do believe that timid youth will die. My kind master is sad, dear Sir Reverend Murgatroyd. Hush! As you love me, breathe not that hated name. Twenty years ago I fled my home and concealed myself in this innocent village under the name of Robin O'Cattle. My younger brother Despard, believing me to be dead, succeeded to the title and its attendant curse. For twenty years I have been dead and buried. Don't dig me up now. Dear master, it shall be as you wish. My poor old friend, would there were more like you? Would there were indeed. But I bring you good tidings. Your foster brother Richard has returned from sea. No, no, it cannot be. <laughs> Welcome home again after ten long years at sea. Oh. Why, Lord love ye, Ralph, what's the matter? Dick, I love Rose Maybud and love in vain. You love in vain? Why, you're a fine young fellow. I and a baronet too. Hush, Richard. Not a word about my true rank which none here suspect. Yes, I'm a fine young fellow, Dick, and worthy any woman's love. B b but I'm timid, Dick. Sh shy. N -n -n nervous, modest, retiring, diffident. And I cannot tell her, Dick, I cannot tell her. Ah, oh, you've no idea what a poor opinion I have of myself and how little I deserve it. Robin, do you call to mind how years ago we swore that we would always act upon our heart's dictates? I've always kept that oath. In doubt, difficulty and danger, I've always asked my heart what I should do and it has never failed me. <laughs> well done. What does my heart say in this year difficult situation? Why, it says, Dick, you ain't shy. You ain't modest. Speak you up for him as is. Oh, well, well, will you do this thing for me? Can you, do you think? <laughs> yes. There's no false modesty about you. My boy, you may take it from me that of all the afflictions accursed with which a man saddled and hampered and addled a diffident nature's the worst. Though clever as clever can be, a crichton of early romance, you must stir it and stump it and blow your own trumpet or trust me, you haven't a chance. If you wish in the world to advance, your merits you're bound to enhance. You must stir it and stump it and blow your own trumpet or trust me, you haven't a chance. 
Now take, for example, my case. I've a bright intellectual brain. In all London City, there's no one so witty I've thought through again and again. I've a highly intelligent face. My features cannot be denied. But whatever I try, sir, I fail in and why, sir? I don't know. I'm modesty personified. If you wish in the world to advance, your merits you're bound to enhance. You must stir it and stump it and blow your own trumpet and trust me, you'll have the chance. If you wish in the world to advance, your merits you're bound to enhance. You must stir it and stump it and blow your own trumpet and trust me, you'll have the chance. Ah, tis a thousand pities he's such a poor opinion of himself. Well, I'll do my best for him. <laughs> Have you spoken to her? I'm a lad. I have, so to speak, spoke her. And she refuses. Why, no. I can't truly say she do. Then she accepts. My darling. Here's a bride who's here's a bride. Let the nuptial love be bright. In their praises, here's their praises. Here's a bride who's here's a bride. Belay, my lad, belay. You don't understand. Oh, sir, belay, I beseech you. You see, tis like this. She accepts. But tis me. You. Here's the bride to hear the bride. Let the natural love be Hold your tongues, will you? Now then, what does this mean? My poor lad, my heart grieves for thee. But tis like this. The moment I see her, and just as I was going to mention your name, I fell in love with her myself. Here's the bride to hear the bride. Let the natural will love be bright. Will you be quiet? Please, please, please. Go away. Vulgar girl. What could I do? Oh, but sir, I knew nothing. That's of... true, my lass. But tis done now, isn't it, Rob? Maybe I should not be happy in thy love. Rose. Sir Despard Murgatroyd. All mad girls love him. I love him. <laughs> I'm poor mad Margaret. Crazy Meg. <laughs> poor Meg. <laughs> that baronet of ruddy Oh, horrible. Too horrible. You pity me. <laughs> Listen. I have come to pinch Rose Maybud. Rose Maybud? But I am Rose Maybud. You are Rose Maybud? Yes, sweet Rose Maybud. Strange, they told me she was beautiful. But see, hide, hide. <laughs> oh, why am I moody and sad? Confess. And why am I guiltily mad? Confess. Because I am thoroughly bad. Oh, yes. You see it at once in my face. Oh, why am I husky and hoarse? Oh, why? It's the workings of God, of course. Why, why? And huskiness stand for emotion. Oh, why? At least it does so in my case. Oh, innocent. 
wasn't happy though poor. If I had been virtuous, I'm sure I should be as nice looking as you're. You are very nice looking indeed. Oh, innocent, listen in time. Avoid an existence of crime. Or you'll be as ugly as I. And now, if you please, we'll proceed. Poor children, how they loathe me. But what is a poor baronet to do when a whole picture gallery of ancestors step down from their frames and threaten him with an excruciating death if he hesitates to commit his daily crime? But I will be bitterly revenged upon them. I will give them all to the nation and nobody shall ever look upon their faces again! Ax your honor's pardon, ah, but... Observed. And by uh, a mariner, what would you with me, fellow? Your Honor, I'm a poor man of war's man, becalmed in the doldrums. I don't know that. And I make bold to ask Your Honor's advice. It's like this. Your Honor had an elder brother. It had. Who should have inherited your title and with it its curse. Aye, but he died. Oh, oh ribbon. He didn't. <gasps> he did not. He didn't. On the contrary, he lives in this very village under the name of Robin O'Keppel. And he's going to marry Rose Maybud this very day. Riven alive and going to marry Rose Maybud? My elder brother lives free. Free at last! <laughs> Understand. I think I do with bigger achievements than shall be taken any sneakly plan. I think so too. I'll readily bet it you'll never regret it. For duty, duty must be done. The rule applies to everyone. And painful though the duty be to shirk the task for fiddle-dee-dee. To shirk the task for fiddle-dee-dee. To shirk the task. To shirk the task for Likewise, the bride, the maidens are very elated and merry. They are her chums. Who lash their pride for almost a fit is a pretty committee. The duty, duty must be done. The rule applies to everyone. And pay for all the duty be to shirk the task for fiddle dee dee. To shirk the task for fiddle dee dee. To shirk the task. To shirk the task for fiddle dee fiddle dee fiddle dee fiddle dee fiddle dee fiddle dee. Title I have long enjoyed 
I claim him as a rhythm Murgatroyd. <laughs> I would if conscientiously I could, but I cannot. Oh, As pure and blameless peasant, I cannot, I regret, deny a truth unpleasant. I am that baronet. He is that baronet. But when completely rated, bad baronet am I, that I am what he stated, I recklessly deny. He recklessly deny. Well, I'm a bad part, I will tell Tara Diddles. <laughs> I'll play a bad part on the pauses of fiddle. I'm very possible to play a bad part. Until that takes place, I must be conscientious. Be conscientious until that takes place. And a deal with good grace to my moral sententious. <laughs> When I'm a bad part, I will tell Tara Diddles I'm very full fiddles. I'd play a bad part, I'd play a bad part of the forces of fiddles. And tell Tara Diddles when I'm a bad part.
Once was as meek as a newborn lamb, I'm now the Murgatroyd. <laughs> with greater precision, without delusion, Sir Ruth the Murgatroyd. <laughs> and I what was his valid sham, as steward I'm now employed. <laughs> The Dickens may take him, I'll never forsake him, as steward I'm now employed. <laughs> How dreadful when an innocent heart becomes the force of a bad young heart, and still more hard on old Adam, his former faithful bad in Hashem, his former faithful business. What crime do you propose to commit today? How should I know? As my confidential advisor, it is your duty to suggest something. Sir, I loathe the life you are leading, but I obey. Richard Dauntless is here with pretty Rose Maybud to ask your consent to their marriage. Poison their beer. No, not that. I know I'm a bad boss. But I'm not as bad a boss as all that. So ho, pretty one. In my power at last, eh? Hold. We are prepared for this. <laughs> Here is a flag that none dare defy. And while this glorious rag floats over Rose Maybud's head, the man does not live who would dare to lay unlicensed hand upon her. Fired! And by the Union Jack. Let me plead with him. The Riven have pity. I have fulfilled my accursed doom. 
I have duly committed a crime a day. But will my ghostly ancestors be satisfied with what I have done? Or will they regard it as an unworthy subterfuge? And howled in the chimney cows, and the bats in the moon and night night. And inky clouds, like funeral shrouds, sail over the midnight skies. When the footpads quail at the night bird's wail, and black dogs bay at the moon, there is the speckled holiday. There is the ghost I And the mists lie low on the fen. From grey two stones are gathered the bones that once were women and men. And away they go, the mop and the bow, to the revel that ends too soon. For cockerel limit our holiday, the dead of the night I move. The Ghost with his lady toast to the churchyard bed take night with a kiss perhaps on her lantern chaps and a grisly grim good night till the welcome and knell of the midnight bell rings forth its a jolliest tune and us as in our daytime holiday for dead of the night I knew <laughs> May 
I ask why you have left your friends? It is our duty to see that our successors commit their daily crimes in a conscientious and workmanlike fashion. Really? I've only been a bad baron at a week, and I have committed a crime punctually every day. Let us inquire into the Monday. Oh, Monday was a bank holiday. True. Tuesday. On Tuesday, I made a false income tax return. On Wednesday, I forged a will. Whose will? My own. My good sir, you can't forge your own will. Can't I, though? I like that. I did. On Thursday, I shot a fox. Kill him! That's better. Pass the fox, I think. Yes! Yes, pass the fox. Friday. On Friday, I forged a check. Whose check? Old Adam. But old Adam hasn't a banker. On Saturday, I disinherited my only son. But you haven't got a son. Mm, unless you undertake to, well, I suppose we say, carry off a lady. Those in favor of his carrying off a lady. Those of the contrary opinion. Oh, you're never satisfied. Yes, unless you undertake to carry off a lady at once, you perish in inconceivable agony. Carry off a lady? No, no. I'm not that kind of a baronet, I assure you. And if that's all you've got to say, you'd better go back to your friends. Very good. Then let the agonies commence. Oh, oh, stop. Stop, I can't stand this. I agree. I promise it shall be done. Today. Today. At once. At once. My poor master, you are not well. Oh, Adam, go. Go to yonder village. Carry off a maiden. Bring her here at once. Anyone, I don't care which. But not a word, but obey. Fly! upon linen drapers. It certainly is a taste a gable. My ways were strange beyond all range. 
the grass got into all the painters. Our new life is delightful indeed. So calm. So unimpassioned. All this I owe to you. See, I'm no longer wild and untidy. My hair is combed. My face is washed. Margaret, don't. How strange. I sometimes think that if we could hit upon some word for you to use whenever I am about to relapse, some word that teems with hidden meaning, like bathing stoke, it might recall me to my saner self. For after all, I'm only poor mad Margaret. Dubbed Meg. <laughs> poor Meg. <laughs> Margaret, pray recollect yourself. Basingstoke, I beg. <laughs> Margaret, if you don't Basingstoke at once, I shall be seriously angry. Basingstoke it is. Then make it so. Despard. This visit is unexpected. My brother, we have come to urge you to abandon the evil courses to which you have committed yourself and at any cost to become a pure and blameless rate pair. But I've done no wrong yet. <gasps> no wrong? He has done no wrong? Did you hear that? Basing Stoke. Basing Stoke it is. My brother, you forget that you have been, in the eye of the law, a bad baronet of Radigor for ten years, and you are therefore responsible, in the eye of the law, for all the misdeeds committed by the unhappy gentleman who occupied your place. Was I very bad? Awful, wasn't he? What a scoundrel I must have been. Oh. There, there, don't cry, my dear. It's all right now. Birmingham, you know, Birmingham. It's Basingstoke. Basingstoke, of course it is, Basingstoke. Then make it so. My mind is made up. I will defy my ancestors. I will refuse to obey their behests. I knew it! I knew it! God bless you! Basing Stoke! Basing Stoke it is. My eyes are fully open to my awful situation. I should go at once to Roderick and make him an oration. I should tell him I've recovered my forgotten moral senses and I don't get up and save any for any consequences. Now I do not want to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but the martyr may indulge a little pardonable swagger. A word or two of common and a vanity with flatter, but I've got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. 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 If I were not a little bit and generally silly, I should give you my advice upon the subject really nearly. I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question and you'd really be astonished at the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I should write you was fairly over letter full of excellent stress when I feel a little better. But at present, I'm afraid I am as bad as any hatter, so I keep the double sum, but my opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. matter, 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 matter. If I had been so lucky as to have a steady brother who could talk to me as we are talking now to one another, who could give me good advice when he discovered I was erring, which is just a very favor, which in you I am preparing, my sister would have made a rather interesting little and I might have been a diet of many. This is a little, this is particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern. Is it generally heard? And if it is, it doesn't matter. 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 This is particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern. Is it generally heard? And if it is, it doesn't matter. This is particularly rapid, Master, the deed is done. What deed? She is here, alone, unprotected. Who? The, the, the maiden? <gasps> I've carried her off. I had a hard task, for she fought like a tiger cat. Great heavens, I had forgotten her. I am foiled again, and by a tiger cat. Produce her, and leave us. <laughs> Begun bravely, bravely indeed. Madam, I am extremely sorry for this. It is not at all what I intended. I am not the witch of my smooth words. If you think I cannot take care of myself, you are very much mistaken. Now then, let the best man win. Oh, oh, don't! Don't look at me like that. I can't bear it. Roderick, uncle, save me! Whoa. 
What's the matter? Have you carried her off? I have. She is there. Look at her. She terrifies me. <laughs> Little Nanaki. Roddy, Doddy. My own old love. Why, how came you here? This brute. He carried me off bodily. But I'll show him. Stop. What do you mean by carrying off this lady? Are you aware that... Once upon a time, she was engaged to be married to me. I'm very angry, very angry indeed. Now, I hope this will be Hold a Hold your tongue, sir. Yes, Uncle. Have you given him any encouragement? Have I given you any encouragement? Frankly, now, have I? No, frankly, you have not. You go away. Yes, Uncle. This is a strange meeting after so many years. Very, I thought you were dead. I am. I died ten years ago. <laughs> This intrusion is unmannerly. I'm surprised at you. An idea has just occurred to me. A baronet of Rudigore can only die through refusing to commit his daily crime. No doubt. Therefore, to refuse to commit a daily crime is suicide. It would seem so. But suicide is itself a crime. And so you ought never to have died at all. I see. I understand that I'm practically alive. Undoubtedly. Hooray! Rose, if I should turn out not to be a bad baronet after all, how would you love me then? Madly, passionately. Oh, my darling! Here, I say, believe! <laughs> 